Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. Have you ever thought about getting out of debt? Well, most people have only thought of it because they think it's impossible. But what if I told you that you could be out of debt, including your house, without changing your budget in five years? Would you believe me? Well, today on Fixing the Money Thing, I'm going to show you just how to do that in just a minute. Gary teaches you how to get started on the path to financial freedom today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, I want my people free. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life, defeated his debt, and set him free. You'll never find your destiny until you fix the money thing. Getting out of debt, boy, I'll tell you what, you get someone's attention because most of America and the world actually lives in debt. And most people that I've talked to want to get out. They don't like being enslaved in debt, but they don't really know how to live otherwise. Well, again, I'm Gary Cassie, and for the last 32 years, I've helped people, hundreds of thousands of people, get out of debt in five to seven years, including their house mortgage, without changing their income all over the world. And so we're going to have a great time today. I guarantee you that we can help you get out of debt. So let's talk about it. You know, I was in a doctor's appointment, uh, oh, just a few weeks ago. And as I was talking to uh, the nurse there, I began to talk about, you know, that people ask me what I do. And if I ever talk about debt, and I use the phrase I just said to you, five to seven years, it always catches their attention. As we began to talk about debt, tears began to flow down her face as she began to explain how she was completely maxed out on her credit cards. It was hopeless, and she began to tell me her life. You think, this is not an isolated story, friend. Just a week later, I was at another situation in a grocery store talking to someone. The same thing happened. That's not isolated. This is how it is in America. Everyone you talk to seems to be living paycheck to paycheck. And so we need to talk about that. The Bible talks about it. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 22, 7, that the, the, uh, the lender, let me read it to you, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Now, slavery doesn't sound too good. People think of slavery as something that's passed away. But actually, I would say this to you today, there are more people enslaved today than there were in any kind of slavery you think of that happened in the past. And it's not accidental, it's planned. We're going to talk about that. Slavery, what comes to mind if I say slavery? You can probably guess a lot of different pictures come to your mind, but slavery means you have no choice. In fact, the word slave in the dictionary literally means that it is someone who legally is owned by someone else and is forced to work for that person. Now, you would say, well, Gary, I live in America. I'm, I'm, fr I'm free. Are you really free, though? You're not. You're not. See, if you're enslaved in debt, you're legally, you signed a contract, you are legally obligated to exchange labor, hours of your life, for the money that you're going to send in envelopes every month to the lender. They are ruling over you, and your choices are limited. So let's talk about slavery, then we'll talk about getting out of debt, but I want you to get a good picture because, see, most people in America have accepted the concept that I'll always have debt. It's interesting to me when I talk to people, they'll say, hey, Gary, I, I, I'm out of debt. I say, fantastic, when did you pay your house off? They go, well, I didn't pay my house off. I just said I was out of debt. <laughs> yes. Well, your, your mortgage is a debt. You're not out of debt, but because people think that they'll always have a quote, 30-year mortgage or a seven-year car loan or whatever it is as a way of life, they esteem living month to month with a few dollars left over to maybe go to a fast food restaurant or a big box store for some entertainment as a way of life, just week by week, month by month, just kind of going nowhere. Friend, that's not life. Friend, life is options, and God has a plan for your life to be free, and slavery is not one of them. So here's, uh, here's how we live in America. You know, owning a home is the American dream. I said owning a home is the American dream, but the fact is people don't own their homes. The bank owns the house. They simply rent it from the bank. But so, nevertheless, people have mortgages, and then they have to pay for it, so they have to have a car to go to work. They have a car loan 
to go to work to pay for the mortgage, which is now indebted. And then they have to have nice clothes. People use the department store credit cards to buy the clothes they need to go to work to pay for the car, which they have to have to pay for the house. And the, oh, what about furniture and draperies and all the things that go in the house? Well, obviously, there's the finance company loans that always offer to take care of those things at a high interest rate. And of course, everyone always thinks that tomorrow will be better than today. And so they kind of deceive themselves into thinking that this is only temporary and tomorrow will be free or, you know, everything's going to happen down the road and it'll be better. <clears throat> but that's not how it's changed. Uh, that's not how it works. In fact, a recent survey found that 57% of Americans do not have a thousand dollars in the bank. In other words, if I asked you to, without planning for it, write me a check for a thousand dollars today, over half of the nation's population cannot write that check. Another statistic is that 44% of Americans, again, almost half, cannot write a $400 check without planning it. A friend, that is sad. 23% of Americans cannot pay their monthly expenses and actually live on debt, slowly building the debt over time. This was a, st a stat that I saw just a few months ago that really surprised me that 49.3% of all Americans make $30,000 or less. Now, to think about that. Half of America makes $30,000 or less and struggling just to survive. Survival in itself is slavery, just trying to survive. 73% of Americans die in debt. You know, people think it's going to get better, but 73% die in debt. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment about the biggest trap you face every day. It's called credit cards. It's amazing. I, I applied for a credit card. I use a bank card. I, I changed the name. I use a credit card, yes, but I pay it off every month for convenience. But I, when I applied for the credit card to use, because I like the point system, I got a credit card. They approved me with a 45, actually it's almost $48,000 line of credit. I mean, I was shocked, $48,000 line of credit on a credit card. And I see these young people apply for a credit card and they get 20,000. I mean, friend, you can, you can dig yourself in very, very quickly. The credit card is um, a tool or it's a trap. You have to answer which one it is. If you'll study your mailbox, and I've taught this for years, if you study your mailbox, you'll find that most of the mail you get is an offer for credit. Credit cards, loans, uh, consolidation loans, whatever. It's going to be an offer of some kind. But credit card offers come in the mail at my house every single day. And the amazing thing is I get the same credit card offer at least once or twice a month. Now, I would usually think, why would they keep mailing this envelope out? It costs money every two weeks. I haven't taken them up on the offer for five years, yet they keep sending me the offer. We're going to find out today exactly what's involved with that, but they're waiting patiently for you to get under stress, pressure, and to take the bait, which is to get the card. And of course, once people have the card, most people never pay it off. Interesting that the credit card industry is so wealthy because of this, $60 billion in fees last year. $60 billion in fees, not the interest, just in fees last year. They have a ton of money. Now, you may have read in the papers recently that the consumer debt in the nation has reached a new record, over $4 trillion in consumer debt. Now, you think, what? Uh, it doesn't sound too big. It's only $4 trillion. Well, if you had to count to one trillion, it would take you 33,000 years to count to one trillion. So that is a huge, huge number. Student loans, another crisis in our country, uh, $1.4 trillion in student loans. In fact, I was talking to a young college grad, just graduated. We were talking about some ministry that he wanted to go into. And in the conversation, I found out he just graduated. He has $70,000 in student debt. I mean, amazing, amazing, 70000 in student debt, and he's just starting in life. That's, that's not great. And so we have this in America, friend, and maybe you're in that situation right now, but I want you to hang on because when I come back, we're going to talk about what to do about this bondage, how to get out of this slavery. I mean, everyone wants free, but how do I get free? Well, I guarantee you can be free. When I come back, we'll talk about that in just a minute. 
more of Gary's life-changing teaching right after this break. Hi, my name is Gary Cassie, and people ask me all the time, what debt should I pay off first in my journey to become debt-free? They began to list various debts, and so let's talk about that today because there is a plan to it. Number one, number one, you must, underline the word must, have a cash reserve. I would start with at least $2,000, preferably $5,000, but you want to start with a cash reserve so if the car breaks down, the tires blow out, you don't have to rely back on the, uh, the credit card to get those things fixed. Cash reserve first. The next debt you want to pay off is uh, two ways to look at it. The smallest payment or the smallest debt with the, the, the largest payment. So let's say you have a car payment that is $400 a month and you have five months left. I would pay that one off because it frees up $400. And then you begin to whittle them down from the highest interest rates down to the lowest. And the lowest is always going to be your mortgage. So people say, should I pay my mortgage off? Well, there's a lot of things to talk about when we talk about paying mortgages off, especially with today's climate of very low interest rates. Sometimes people have mortgages I've seen in the 2% range. Now at that range, friend, that is the same range as inflation. I would preferably, as long as you have a 30 year fixed or a 15 year fixed, a low rate that's fixed, I would take that money and begin to invest it in a, in a vehicle that can make more than 2% instead of paying off my 2% mortgage. But again, the objective is cash reserve, pay consumer debt off, starting with if you have a payment that is very big compared to the balance, pay that one off to free cash up quickly, then begin to attack the highest interest rate debts next, chalking them off, then your mortgage is a question mark. Should I pay it off or not, depending on the interest rate? But the bottom line is, get rid of your debt. Cash always presents options. This is today's Money Tip. I'm Gary Cassie. Welcome back. You know, we were talking about credit cards and debt and slavery and all that nasty stuff. But there's one thing I need to show you because someone knows how money works and most people don't. So for instance, Right now, there are 1.2 billion credit cards in the United States. That's a lot of credit cards out there. And the average interest rate, in other words, all the cards combined, all the, the interest, if you average the interest rate, is like 21% on those cards. Now, you and I go down to the bank, you know, we'll put money in the bank, we might get 2%, but banks have found a way to invest their money at 21%. So what do they know? that we don't know? Interesting question. Well, let's just say you had $25 a month to invest, you're age 20, and at age 70, that's 50 years, that's your working lifetime, you just consistently put that $25 a month in an investment. And let's assume you could get the 21% that the bank is getting. What would it grow to? $25 a month over that 50 year period of time, and you'd have to agree, anyone could probably invest $25 a month. If you had a place to invest at 21%, it would grow to, hold, hold on, $48 million. Your retirement would be assured. You would have no problems. But you don't have a place that you can guaranteed invest at that. But the banks do. Even $1 a month, if you just invested $1 a month for 50 years, it would grow to $1.8 million at a 21% interest rate. Now, I think you're getting the picture, why they send the envelopes, why they keep trying to get you in debt, because it's not because they love you, it's not because they want you to have their products, it's because they want you in debt paying interest. In fact, try it. Go to a retail store, a major retail store. Take cash in your hand so the clerk can see it and say, I'm purchasing these goods today. The clerk will not take your money. They're going to ask you a question first. They're going to say, would you like our credit card? Of course, you're thinking, credit card, I have cash in my hand. Oh, but you'll get 15% off this purchase if you take our card today. Now, being the uh, very wise shopper as you are, you think, I can't leave 15% on the table, so you apply for the card and you have the card, and what happens is the average person that does that does not pay it off. In fact, it takes 22 years to pay a credit card off if you make the minimum payment, but people deceive themselves. 
It's crazy. You've heard of the 90 day same as cash? Well, people, they don't go into that process thinking, well, I'm just gonna bury myself in debt. You know what they think? I'm gonna pay this off in 90 days. It's no interest, it's free interest. 90 days, same as cash, that's crazy. Why wouldn't I do that? Guess what? 80% of the people that do that never pay it off in 90 days. They end up with a finance company loan at between 28 and 32%. Friend, you need to understand that someone wants your money. And unless you know how money works, you'll never defend yourself against these tactics. Now, how do we get free? Well, obviously, the first thing you want to do to get free is you have to decide to be free. What that means is you have to decide not to fall for the trap. That's easy. Keep the pen in the pocket and don't sign any debt papers, all right? That's how you do it. Stay out of debt. Don't sign debt papers. That's number one. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, how do I survive? How can I buy things? I mean, I don't have enough cash to do this big deal. I mean, I need to have the cash. You know, I got to use debt. Well, that's where the deception is. You don't have to use debt. So, for instance, I remember talking to a lady I went to help, and uh, she, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm out of money. I said, okay, what, what do you have? And so I began to find, I found out she had 52 credit cards maxed out, 52. And I said, oh, ma'am, you want to get out of debt? You got to cut these cards up. She burst into tears and said, how am I going to buy my shoes? Well, I about flipped out of my chair. Shoes, let's talk about food. Let's talk about something more important. Let's talk about your future. Let's talk about getting free. The first step of getting free from debt is to stop using debt. And the only way to do that is to stop using debt. <laughs> you have to make a decision. You have to make a quality decision that I can get free. Now, I know you're going to think it's going to be torturous and I can't ever have anything. And here's what I tell people. They still make them. Well, I can't buy that. I can't. They still make them. They'll take your cash later when you can afford it. They still make it. And so you have to retrain yourself how to do that. Now, here's how you get out of debt. Number one, stop using debt. Number two, you've got to learn how the biblical system of finances work. The kingdom of God has more information on finances than it does heaven. The Bible is very clear on biblical principles that God has told us work. And by using those principles, you can be free. So for instance, my wife and I, we're in debt for nine years, serious debt. I mean, bondage, panic attacks, antidepressants, uh, IRS liens, pawn shops, everything canceled type debt. And for nine years, not one week, nine years, it was hopeless, hopeless, hope. Hell on earth, actually, is what it was. Hell on earth. I always say financial stress kills you slowly, but it does kill you. Okay, so it was hell on earth. And I didn't, I didn't like living in hell on earth, but God taught me how the kingdom of God operates and by applying biblical principles and learning how the kingdom operated, in two and a half years, we were completely debt-free, went on to start companies, pay cash for cars and houses, whatever. It changed our entire life, so much so that we launched this program to help you. Fixing the money thing, we need to fix your money thing. And you need to help us. We're going to do it together, okay? So you understand now someone wants your money. You understand you need to know biblical principles. So let's talk about some basics. How do I start getting out of debt? I'm assuming right now as we talk, as we're talking, you are cutting your credit cards up right now as we're talking. I hope you are. All right, now, number two, we're gonna, we got to find money. So it takes money to pay debt off. So, Gary, how do I find it? That's easy. Now, I know that just shocked you. That, that's easy because you have a lot of money you don't know you even have. Now, I've done this for 32 years. I have shown people how to be debt-free in five to seven years, including their home mortgage, without changing their budget, their income, by finding lost money. So we've got to find lost money. The first place we have to look is your budget. So I want you to get a piece of paper out. I know you don't have time right now, but at least make a note. Write your budget down on paper, not what you think you spend. I want you to go back in time over the last three months and write down exactly what you spent for eating out, what you spent for whatever. I want those numbers have to be accurate because in those numbers, we're going to find a lot of wasted money and then we're going to find a lot of wasted money that you don't even have a clue where it's at. We'll talk about that. So first, you got the budget and obviously the very first scan, you can find money. You can say, well, I can do better with that. I can cut back on that. I can... I can cook more at home. You, you'll find some money just by looking at your lifestyle and deciding that, you know what, I can do better with that money. Okay, that you'll find some money. When you do, write it down. Write it down. If it's $200 a month, if it's $300, write that number down. 
Now becomes the fun part. I call it a treasure hunt because everyone has treasure they don't know. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk into your basement. Okay, so let me write this down. We're going to go to the basement and the garage. And I want you to look at things that are covered with dust. Things that you have purchased, you're not using, and you could sell. Everyone has things they can sell that they haven't used for a long time in the, in the garage, the basement. And so what we're, gonna look, what we're looking for right now is we're building a cash reserve. So we're looking for money that can be a lump sum. Now, remember, we had you write down the budget found money, the money you found on the budget. That's, we'll come back to that. Right now, we're looking for a lump sum. So we're going to sell things in the basement. We're going to sell things in the garage. And we'll come up with a lump sum. We're going to find it. That's not a dollar sign, is it? Let me do that again. Dollar sign. We're going to find a lump sum. And we'll keep adding to that as we go through that. So there's money there. Number two, I want you to look at all your monthly payments. And I want you to look for payments that are not necessary. So we're going to look for items you can live without. Maybe it's a second car. Or maybe it's an RV, maybe it's a motorcycle, whatever it is. Maybe it's a gym membership. I'm, you can kind of figure out where I'm headed. Whatever it is, you're going to find you are spending money on monthly payments. This list is monthly payments. Money you're spending monthly with things that you would not exchange your freedom for. In other words, is the second car, assuming you don't need, you know, you have a spare car, is it worth your freedom? Is the RV worth your freedom? Is the motorcycle worth your freedom? Uh, you have to decide what's valuable. Now, that adds up to another list of monthly money here that we can apply towards your debt. So we have a lump sum. That becomes your cash reserve. We're now finding monthly money. And this is all fairly obvious stuff. And then we're going to dig into things you don't look at a lot, like taxes, insurance, your current debt structure, all of that. Now, obviously, we don't have time to cover that today, but we do cover it in a brand new book I've just brought out called Nine Simple Steps to Your Financial Freedom. In this book, it'll show you how to put together what I've just talked about, how to get the worksheets. They're all listed in here, how to find the money, where to find the money, and then what I would do is couple this book with my book, Fixing the Money Thing, which covers how to find lost money. In both of these books, with this concept of locating money you don't know you have, we're going to find enough money to get you out of debt in five to seven years, including your mortgage. So again, brand new book just came out. Get that with your family. Sit down, go through it, Fixing the Money Thing. And you can put together the plan with these two tools to begin the process we just barely tapped on here by going to GaryCassie.com. You'll be, I mean, it's all right there. You can go through the process with you and your family and find the money and then begin to accelerate your debt and you can be free. We've done it with hundreds of thousands of people for 32 years. It'll work for you and you'll enjoy life. It'll be better and God is great. He'll help you as well. And you do not have to live hopeless anymore. You can be free and excited about your tomorrow. Go to GaryCassie.com. You'll find the information there. And I pray for you now in the name of Jesus that, Father, I first come against fear and anxiety in the financial area. I know how that is. I bind that lie in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. They can be free. And we ask you for revelation and insight and creativity for them to see and understand that, yes, they can be free. And I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. I look forward to seeing you next time right here at Fixing the Money Thing. Go to GaryCassie.com. Begin your journey to freedom today.